on the women's side. All a part of UFC 200, the co-made event. Amanda Nunez taking on Misha Tate. Tate was looking to defend her UFC women's bantamweight title. First round, Tate shoots for the takedown, but Nunez scrambles for the escape. Tate was in trouble early in this one, and right then you had the indication that, uh-oh, we could be seeing an upset. You see there, Nunez counters, more punishing straight right hands. Tate then backed up against the cage. Big combos from Nunez, and then the takedown, you see it, that would be the end of the title run for Misha Tate. Nunez wins via first round submissions, kisses her girlfriend after the fight, fellow UFC fighter Nina and Sarah. Nunez now on a four fight win streak in UFC. So here's a look at what happened in 200. It was an action packed night in his return to the octagon. Brock Lesnar defeated Mark Hunt by unanimous decision. It was Lesnar's first win in a UFC bout since 2010. In the light heavyweight bout, this one good too. Remember Daniel Cormier, he also won by unanimous decision. He defeated Anderson Silva. You might remember his original opponent, John Jones, was pulled for a potential doping violation. And finally, Josie Aldo defeated Frankie Edgar to win the interim featherweight title. It was Aldo's first fight since losing the featherweight belt to Conor McGregor at UFC 196 in March. What a fun night it was. Our UFC analyst, Brett Okamoto, was there and joins us live this morning from Las Vegas. And Brett, Amanda Nunez won last night, making her the fourth bantamweight title winner in 238 days since Holly Foam, of course, dethroned uh, Ronda Rousey. So Rousey held the title for 1,074 days. What's your take right now with all the movement in the future of the women's division? You know, Matt, when, when Holly Holm knocked out Ronda Rousey in November last year, one of the things she said was that I'm showing to every woman in this division that no one is unbeatable, you know, because for a long time, Rousey looked unbeatable. And Holm says, no, that doesn't exist in this sport. Anyone can lose on any given night. And it sounded like sort of a cliche thing to say, but I think the women of this division took that to heart. You're seeing these challengers come in with a lot of confidence now. And that is the one thing for all of the skills that Rousey brought to, to the octagon and how great she was and could still be. One of the greatest advantages she has was her mental advantage over everyone else. That no longer exists for anyone in this division. So I think you're going to see this continue, the belt exchanging hands frequently um, now that that's gone. Yeah, look, and it makes it competitive, and it makes it good for the sport for people to watch this. Now, one of the big stories coming in last night, of course, Brock Lesnar made what he said was a one-off appearance for UFC 200, defeating Mark Hunt. Do you believe that this was the last time we'll see Lesnar in the octagon? I never know what to believe with Brock Lesnar. You know, this guy retired just last year. He sat on Sports Center and said, I'm never coming back to mixed martial arts. And then here he is in July of this year. So this is a man who keeps his cards very close to his chest. If, it, if I had to lean one way or the other, I would say that this is the last time that we see Brock Lesnar. To me, it's just a perfect way to go out. Uh, quit while you're ahead. He didn't take a whole lot of damage last night. He beat a top 10 heavyweight. He made a lot of money. Um, but we'll see, because the UFC is always willing to be in the Brock Lesnar business. It really depends on what Lesnar wants to do and what the WWE is willing to allow him to do. Yeah, but it gave this UFC fight card, the UFC 200 fight card, a big star power name that they ended up needing towards the end of this. And let's switch gears now to Daniel Cormier. He was supposed to be a part of the headliner last night until John Bones Jones failed the drug test. Cormier did score the win over the replacement, Anderson Silva. So what's next for Cormier? Well, I think what Cormier is preparing for is life without John Jones, and I think the UFC is doing the same thing. We still don't know exactly what sanctions Jones is going to get for that doping violation, but I think people are, are, are hoping for the best but expecting the worst, and the worst could be a two-year suspension. So if you're Daniel Cormier, you're 37 years old, you can't be sitting around thinking about a fight against John Jones in 2018. You need to be thinking about the division uh, that you're at the top of right now. There's a fight between Anthony Johnson and Glover Teixeira at UFC 202 on August. 20th. That looks like a number one contender to me. The winner of that would be DC's next fight. All right, let's still pump it, start pumping up the hype machine here. Jose Aldo defeated Frankie Edgar last night, but look who was in the stands staring daggers ringside. Conor McGregor, Aldo and McGregor, of course, then exchanged words after the fight. Remember, McGregor knocked out Aldo in 13 seconds back in December. Brett, we're talking about the rumblings now. We're already hearing of an Aldo McGregor rematch. Dana White said McGregor would face Aldo, quote, after his next fight against Nate Diaz. Is it too early to think about that? 
Of course, it is too early to think about that. You know, Conor McGregor is fighting Nate Diaz for a shot at redemption in a welterweight fight at UFC 202 on August 20th. But that won't stop us from talking about it anyway. This is a very fun fight to talk about. And what makes it fun to discuss is Jose Aldo was so good for so long. He was unbeatable for 10 years, but no one really paid attention to him. He finally got a fight where all the eyeballs were on him, and he got knocked out in 13 seconds by Conor McGregor. So that is now part of his legacy. He needs to right that wrong. That is a great storyline, and I do hope we see that by the end of the year. But right now, uh, yeah, I think the focus has to be on, on, on Conor McGregor trying to get that win back against Nate Diaz in August. Yeah, we're going to see what happens. That's going to be UFC 202. Brett Okamoto, a busy week out there in Vegas, but UFC 200 now in the books. So we talked about the countdown. Let it begin for UFC 202. We just mentioned it there. Features the highly anticipated rematch between McGregor and Nate Diaz. Remember, it was Diaz who won back in March at UFC 196, with just over a month until the fight. The odds makers currently have McGregor as the slight favorites. All right, Tom, thank you so much. Let's go back to Las Vegas last night. Daniel Cormier would have been the lead in this show if John Jones had passed his pre-fight drug test. Instead, Cormier taking on Anderson Silva, who got the fight on two days' notice. Non-title fight, three rounds, and the winner was booed. Daniel Cormier booed by the fans in attendance because of the fact that he took Silva down to the ground. It's kind of a ground-and-pound match. It wasn't as electric or full of strikes, perhaps, as the fight with Jones would have been. Cormier would win unanimous decision 30 to 26 across all cards. Jonathan Coachman has more from Las Vegas. Randy, thank you very much. Welcome back to the T-Mobile Arena here in Las Vegas. Chael Sonnen and the coach. And now it's time, uh, Chael, for us to look forward. What's next? Let's start at the top. Brock Lesnar, he said at the time it was a one-off. But he also said after he won on Saturday, let's take one day at a time. What do you think his future is in the UFC? I do not think he'll be back. Now, I certainly hope he is. I'll tell you this, Coach. Not very many athletes, particularly in this field, get to go out on top, get to go out on her, uh, their terms. Brock was one of those statistics. Five years ago when he walked away, he did not walk away on top. He was essentially carried into the back. He came back and said, I just want to give this one more try. This is about me going out there and do something I want to do and leave it on my terms. Now he's had success. He can go off. He can ride into the sunset and never look back. The other side of that, Coach, it's a very seductive lifestyle. It's very hard to not walk into a building like this, collect a $15 million paycheck, and have uh, guys talking about you on Sports Center when it's over. I personally think that he's done, but I hope he comes back. I remember what he said to Hannah Storm the day after, the Monday after the announcement. He said, hey, I'm getting paid a whole lot of money, <laughs> and he could do that a whole lot of more times if he looks like he did on Saturday night. Now, Daniel Cormier, he was supposed to be the main event. John Jones out. And then he faces Anderson Silva. He doesn't fight in the most sexy way, but he is a really good fighter. As a light heavyweight champion, what do you think his future is? Look, I think that it's very bright. The only thing that Daniel Cormier needs is an opponent. Daniel Cormier, as good as he is, he's a great guy. He's likable. He's well-spoken. The problem is he has no records. He's got a gold belt that says he's the best, but he has no pay-per-view records. He has no live gate records. He has no t-shirt sale records. For some reason, the crowd just hasn't quite latched on to Daniel. On the other side of that, if you insert John Jones, you could have one of the biggest pay-per-views in history, if not recent memory. With the absence of John Jones, with the fact that the Anderson Silva card has already been played, I don't know who you put him with. That division lacks parity at this time. Somebody needs to come forward. All right, and finally we saw Saturday night a dominant performance by Jose Aldo, and he went right over to Conor McGregor and said, hey, I want you. Well, Conor McGregor, we know, is going to fight Nate Diaz at UFC 202. But the nice thing about the situation is that no matter what happens that night, he is the featherweight champion of 145, and that matchup can be made. Will that be the next fight for Aldo? I think that it has to be. Listen, when 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 Aldo's got a belt, call it the interim title, and Connor's got the world belt, you have to put them together. But the question comes, and this is why you asked it, will Connor drop back down to that weight class? Will Connor ever defend that belt? I think that he will. He was talking about setting his sights on 155. I think with the immersion of Eddie Alvarez, that reality has set in for Connor that that's just not going to work out for me. He needs to keep his eye on the ball, though, which is Nate Diaz on August 20th. Well, Eddie Alvarez said he wanted Connor McGregor, but everybody wants Connor McGregor because he and nobody is the wants. Eddie Alvarez. Well, that's true. And make no mistake about it. When you talk about star of stars, 
Conor McGregor was at ringside on Saturday night, and they showed him several times. The crowd went bonkers. Even though he was not in UFC 200, he was very much a part of it. The bad guy, Chael Sonnen. I'm the coach. That's all we can do. No more. Randy Scott, back to you. All right, Coach, we appreciate it. McGregor will be back in the octagon August 20th for his rematch against Nate Diaz at UFC 202. McGregor has been the sport's biggest star, oh. owning the three largest live gates 